131,000 kilometers of track, 3.37 billion passenger trips, more than 4 billion tons of cargo transportation. China's railway network powered on in 2018. Once in the slow lane, China is now the world's number one in passenger and freight railway traffic. Since the nation's first train route, the Chengdu Chongqing Railway, began operations in 1953, China has invested heavily in expanding the rail grid and reducing journey times. From the Baotou Lanzhou Railway, the first train link through the desert, to the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the world's highest and longest high plateau rail line, China has overcome a slew of challenges while also progressing steadily toward building a network of eight east-west and eight north-south high-speed rail lines. Today, China's railway network spans almost every corner of the country, from deserts to cities, from plateaus to plains. Its high-speed rail network has a total track length of almost 30,000 kilometers, twice as long as the rest of the world's high-speed rail lines combined. The speed of trains has also increased dramatically, up six-fold in the past 70 years. What does it mean? Back in 1949, commuting from Beijing to Shanghai took 36 hours. Seven decades on, the travel time has dropped to four hours and 18 minutes, thanks to the Fuxing train that runs at 350 kilometers per hour. And the future could still be more astounding. China is planning to build a super high-speed maglev train that could reach 800 kilometers per hour. What's the secret to China's stunning rail development? Unlike some developed countries where new railway construction is often primarily motivated by profit, a desire to improve people's quality of life and opportunities is the driving force behind China's infrastructure expansion. For example, China built the Chengdu Kunming Railway, a route over difficult terrain, to give ethnic minority groups more mobility. Spanning 991 bridges and 427 tunnels, the railway is hailed as a miracle of engineering. But prioritizing accessibility ahead of profit does not necessarily mean bad investments. China has formed a set of standards for high-speed rail, plateau railways, heavy haul transport, and railways in extreme conditions, and that standardization has meant significant savings. Even the World Bank praised China's railway construction. In its report, China's high-speed rail development, the World Bank concludes that the construction cost of the Chinese high-speed rail network is only two-thirds of that of other countries, thanks to the standardization of designs and procedures. This, combined with high traffic density, means high return on investment. The rate of return on China's high-speed rail network as of 2015 is estimated at 8%, well above the opportunity cost of capital in China and most other countries for major long-term infrastructure investments, according to the World Bank in its report. The high return rate, in turn, has contributed to more investments in rail, further accelerating China's development. The speed of China's growth has astounded the world, and a peek at China's railway construction helps explain what has underpinned the country's fast journey over the past 70 years.